Good morning. Good morning. It's a blessing that we can all be here together. It's a blessing we have an opportunity to worship God. I'm excited about the series we've been doing on Sunday mornings. We've been looking at different mothers of the Bible and lessons that we can learn from these great mothers. Um, in honor of Mother's Day in the following weeks, we've been trying to spend some time looking at these great women of the Bible and things that made them great. Things that made them uh, models to look up to and that helped brought us to where we are today. Today we're going to talk about a woman that you may not be familiar with. You may not have ever heard of Jochebed. But Jochebed is a great mother in the Bible. She was the mother of Moses, Aaron, and Mary. She was a mother that caused, uh, that tra helped train up these young men and women that would end up leading Israel through the wilderness and to the promised land. What a great mother she was. If you will turn over to Numbers 26 and verse 59. Numbers 26 and verse 59. That's going to be our text for this morning's lesson. Numbers chapter 26 and verse 59. I'm going to have it up here on the screen beside me as well. And I would encourage you as always to follow along in your Bibles. The name of Abraham's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And she bore to Abraham... Aaron, Moses, and Mary, and their sister. This morning, as we're talking about Jochebed, and we're looking at her faith and her love and her relationship with God, I hope that we find things in this relationship that we can emulate, things that will help strengthen us in our walk with God. First, I want you to remember her courage. The courage she had to do the things that she did that made Moses who he was. Second, I want us to look at her faith. And ways we can emulate that faith. And third and finally, I want us to look at her reward. First, her courage. You see, Jochebed was a woman of much courage. She lived at a very dangerous time. In the time she lived, the Pharaoh had decreed that the sons ought to be put to death that were born. In fact, the Pharaoh had organized a little deal with the midwives that as the women gave birth to the young Jewish boys, that she, they would then take them and dispose of them. The midwives would not do that. There's quite a bit of faith to be set on their part for that. But Miriam herself hid her son. She protected Moses. In Proverbs 31, verse 8 and 9, the wise man says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. That's Proverbs 31, 8 and 9. You see, Moses couldn't speak for himself. Moses could not stand for himself. Especially in the day and time we're living in, this is important for us. We have an ability to speak out. What a wonderful country we live in to be able to speak our mind. To be able the freedom of speech. And yes, that, that is something that not all people are blessed with. But we can defend the oppressed, even if it is only verbally. We can stand up and speak out. Here, Jochebed, she had an obligation, one that she fulfilled, to protect someone who could not protect themselves. Not just in her protection of Moses was she courageous, but remember, she defied Pharaoh. The king, the ruler, the all-supreme one that could have had her killed in an instant and nobody would have had a second thought about it. She was willing not only to stand up for someone who was oppressed, but to stand up to the highest power in the land. Was she afraid? I'm sure. It would have been very unwise for her not to be. But in spite of her fear, she acted. that great quote from John Wayne, what is courage? It's being very afraid, I'm paraphrasing here for obvious reasons, and saddling up anyways. Well, that's Jochebed. Even in the face of oppression, she stood up. In Daniel chapter 3, 7, and 8, we read about some other people who stood up even if it might mean their death. In Daniel 3, 7, and 8, here's the answer of three young men. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But notice 
Notice their courage here. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. They said, our God has the power to deliver us out of your hand. They've been told to bow down to this golden image. And they said, no. They serve God and no one else. They would not worship any other God. They said, our God has the power to deliver us out of this fiery furnace you want to throw us into. But even if he doesn't, even if we die, we still will serve him. That's the faith shock of it. Did she know that God was able to protect her? Yes. Was she willing to die? That's what it meant. To protect someone who didn't have a voice to, to speak for themselves. Yes. She was very courageous. She also had quite a bit of faith. You see, there came a time when Jacobet could no longer hide Moses. But because she was, he was beautiful in her eyes, she acted out in faith in God. In Hebrews chapter 11, and verse 23, notice here, Moses is mentioned, but it's not his faith, but the faith of his parents. See, Jochebed was a hero. In Hebrews 11, 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's eating. What faith they had. Jochebed, here in the list of all these other people that acted out in faith, right next to Samson and Isaiah, right next to Moses and Abraham and Sarah, right next to these great people of faith, here is Jochebed, who did her motherly duty even in the face of gospel death. But it didn't just stop here. Her faith wasn't just in hiding her son, but she also let him go. She trusted God to provide for him. In Exodus 2, 3, and 4, when she could no, hide him no longer, she took, him for, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the river bank. And his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done for him. What trust there had to be there. This was ancient Egypt. This wasn't a place where all the crocodiles had been corralled into a zoo and couldn't get to you. This wasn't a place where you were free from predators. What faith she had to leave her son in a basket. Can you imagine how hard it would have been to walk away? Hearing the baby cry? The child you've been risking your life for, for three months, hiding. But she had faith in God. And God responded. Someone came and found that child. Someone came and rescued that child. By the providence of God, I don't doubt a bit in my mind. And who was it but someone a Pharaoh's household who would then raise that child? Her reward. What more could a mother ask for in her situation than to get her child back? You see, the sister Mary who was there nearby, when she saw the Pharaoh's daughter, in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 7, she went down to Pharaoh's daughter, who had found Mo, baby Moses, and said, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse a child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said, Yes. And she went, and she got Moses' mother, Jochebed. And Jochebed kept Moses and nursed him and took care of him. What an amazing return from God. But this was the greatest blessing she was this may seem like the world to someone who feels like they've lost their child to receive back. But this wasn't her greatest reward. This wasn't all that she had to look forward to. This was something physically temporary. Her reward was Moses himself. You see, she left a legacy for Moses just like Timothy's mother and grandmother had left for him. She left a legacy of Moses, an example of that faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24, we see a mother and then a son, both listed as heroes in this hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith Moses, this is Hebrews 11, 24. By faith Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the 
people of God that enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He, he was royalty. He had whatever he wanted that Egypt had to offer, and Egypt had many pleasures to offer, let me assure you. But he would rather suffer as a child of God than live in pleasure, as we might call him, a child of Satan. He would rather enjoy affliction and be one of God's people than to not be counted among God's. What a reward. What greater blessing could Jochebed ask for than for her child to be faithful? For her child to then follow in her footsteps of faith. To step out. And this isn't where the story of Moses ends, is it? This is just one son. Are we forgetting about Aaron? Jochebed raised Aaron to be the first high priest, the mouthpiece of Moses to Pharaoh, standing toe to toe against these magicians, performing these miracles until the magicians bow out and say, I can't go any longer. This is the power of the great God. <clears throat> How proud of the mother she must have been. What a reward. And Mary. She wasn't someone of no standing in Israel either. After crossing the Red Sea, she led the daughters of Israel in a song, praising God for the wonderful work He had done. Wow. How proud this mother must have been. I want to leave us with a question. We have this wonderful example of Jacobin. We have this wonderful example of a mother, a woman, of a child of God having faith, trusting God, her creator, trusting her Lord, her Savior, to deliver her, acting out in faith and leaving that legacy for her children, those that went on after her. The question I have for you this morning, are you trusting in God? Are you putting your faith and your trust in God as Shachabed did? <coughs> God loves you. He cares about you. <coughs> Jesus came and He died on the cross because He wants you to be with Him. And what does He ask in return? Not that you live up to a certain standard to be worthy of it. You were made worthy of that calling, of that child of God position when He died for you. When the question was asked, what is man worth that you be mindful of him? God answered, my son. Jesus answered, my life. And he gave it. He gave it so that you could decide to be his. This morning, I want to beg you, I want to implore you to act in faith. To follow the example of God. <coughs> Stand up to whatever it takes. Give your life so wholly over to God that it doesn't matter what obstacle you come up against, that you're going to be His. That you're going to live for Him. Whether you face rulers, whether you face friends and family members, whether you face struggles, whether you have to leave anything and everything that is good, even like Moses did in Pharaoh's household. You have to leave behind everything that you enjoy. Follow Jesus. This morning, if you want to make that decision, it's very simple to make. You just die. You die to yourself. You give up on living your own life and live the one that He wants you to live. You decide that I no longer want to serve self, but I want to serve my Savior. And when you give that life up, you bury it. Not in the ground. Jesus died and was buried in the tomb and the earth and was raised on the third day so that you wouldn't have to suffer that physical death of your sin. So that you could be buried in water. Not for the removal of filth of your flesh. Not because the water has any special properties. But because when you reenact that historical event, that death, burial, and resurrection, you do so to your salvation. You make an appeal to God, calling on His name, Acts 22, 16, and those sins are washed away. It's at that point that you
and rise out of that water as a new creature, a new creation, a child of God. Living not as your own, because you've been bought with a price. This morning, if you were subject to the invitation, would you come right now together as dancing?